Do you or have you ever looked down on Taiwanese people? What's your least favorite part about Ku? And if I get hit by a bus, then that's my biggest fear eradicated because I didn't know I was going to die. I'm going to be stressing about your video so much when you edit it. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another video. My name is Pradhan hey. and I'm here with my best friend, Alan, from Life in Taiwan. Roger, how? He has a channel uh, you guys probably already know about over on YouTube. You can go check it out. And today, I thought I would ask him five questions that you have no choice but to answer honestly. Oh my goodness. I'm... The forfeit is I will never talk to you again. Oh, brilliant. Um, We've just filmed it on my channel for you, so they should definitely go check that out. That's right. He asked me five questions that I had to answer. It's uh, released right now, so go check it out on his channel. Your son famously lives in South Africa. Why does my son live in South Africa? Yes, as opposed to living here with his father in, in Taiwan. Well, it's... Uh combination of logistics mm -hmm. and the mother's wish so we decided together that William was always going to have a Western education and also by this point I'd opened a YouTube channel and was earning a decent salary that could afford for him to be educated in a private school in South Africa with security now if you ask me to do it again maybe I would rethink that decision was there any part of yourself that made that decision in a little bit more of a selfish way because you could have your own life here in Taiwan and have as much fun as you want without having uh, maybe some of the responsibilities of being a husband or, or a father, you can kind of just sort of throw money at it and no, just like... No, I have to say like 100% honestly, not even like 1% that came into my mind, I could have like a single lifestyle. There is no part of me that would say that was the case. 2017 when William left was probably the darkest, most saddest part of my life I've ever imagined in my whole life. Like mm. undoubtedly it was like a massive part of me had been ripped out. Do you or have you ever looked down on Taiwanese people? No, never. I've looked down on people that are Taiwanese, okay. but not for being Taiwanese. And I'm sure people have looked down on me for certain things that I've done or certain videos that I've made or certain statements that I've made. I don't think it's possible to look down on Taiwanese people because most of them have got their lives in order way better than I have. Do you think there's somewhere that I have done that you would disagree with? When we're out in public together, there's like an ease of conversation with Taiwanese people that you wouldn't have with British people. Like there's almost like a, uh, a lack of threat there where you can just kind oh, of okay. say whatever you want or do whatever you want because there's I've just sort the, of this... the, the, the VIP card? Sort of. I don't know if it's like because of you necessarily, but I think there's also sort of this gray zone in between you and Taiwanese people that you don't have with British people, where you kind of have to watch your step with British people because you kind of know what but to and what not to say. That Whereas with British down people, upon you can with Taiwanese people, you can you can kind of take a little bit more risk. What you're saying is completely true. I definitely feel like. Taiwanese people are more receptive to a foreigner going up and talking to them and yeah I definitely feel like if I'm in a public space and there's Taiwanese people about I'll say hello how are you do you feel more comfortable filming in front of Taiwanese people as opposed to if everyone here was British 100% if we were in my local pub now in England and there was all British people around drinking pints of beer and we were talking to our phone having a conversation I'd be like so self-conscious right but in, in Taiwan I feel like it's just very normal to get the phone out, start talking. Sure. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and don't yeah. really care what people think. What's your least favorite part about Ku? Is that he's too busy, he's never... Aside from being French. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he makes me incredibly nervous when he's on my channel. Okay. I feel like I've got to up production levels and right. satisfy him and give him like a credibility because he mm -hmm. has a huge responsibility having 1.7 million subscribers. He feels that responsibility in every video that he makes right. to entertain and give the, the correct information and represent Taiwan as an ambassador should. Sure. So when he's on my channel, I feel like I'm carrying those 1.7 million subscribers right. into my 30% the size of his channel, my channel. Mm -hmm. So it gives me like an added pressure. I filmed a video with him recently eating Korean food and the whole video I was just fumbling over my words, getting nervous, asking him questions that I knew the answer to. And he was like, bro, you know this. I'm like, yeah, I, said, I forgot. Like I put some egg in his, on his plate and I, he's allergic to egg. Some egg. <laughs> I don't eat egg. <laughs> I don't eat egg. Oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> I'm stressing out. Like, I'm allergic to egg, bro. I'm like, I, know, I knew that. One egg is enough. <laughs> That's how he said. Enough is enough. <laughs> What's your least favorite thing about me? Least favorite thing about Prozzi is... I'm half French. <laughs> apart from, the, apart from the, the fact that you're half French, you don't realize your full potential. You could be out traveling around Taiwan, meeting different people. I guess that it's your personality that sort of restricts you from that. Also, or... <laughs> my least favorite part of you is my entire personality. personality. <laughs> no, your personality limits the fact that you should be 
pushing yourself further, trying to have right. more experiences, trying to boost your channel up. I don't want you to be a YouTuber with 135,000 subscribers. I want you to be a YouTuber with a half a million subscribers, a million subscribers. I want you to be a YouTuber introducing Taiwan's underground culture that you can maybe explore the negative parts of Taiwan where you can rely on views rather than relying on sponsors for income because I think a lot of the world wants to see the underground sides of Asian countries like Japan, Korea, and you could be the person that brings Taiwan's alternative side to the forefront. Sure. Uh, so if any mafia members want to hit me up on Instagram, don't do that. <laughs> it doesn't have to be mafia. It can be like, you know, alternative things. Like, like who went to a Kung Fu dojo where they hang weights from their balls? That would be perfect for you to introduce something a little bit edgy, a little bit like quirky or funny. And your yeah. way of spinning that would be so much different to the way anybody else would do it. So it's difficult to do it by yourself and you need a producer or an assistant or someone that can make those connections for you. But yeah, I would say like just the- Show my balls. Yeah. That's what I took away from. All three of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's something you've always wanted to do but haven't had the courage to try yet, aside from heroin? A little bit similar to the question I've just answered about you, the things that I want to see you do, is maybe be a little bit more risque, a bit more push myself and explore some darker parts of Taiwan, like KTVs, this kind of thing, like... Mm -hmm. Go around pushing people off of scooters that sound like that. Yeah, that would be nice. Like, I'm sure there's parts of Taiwan that aren't so glamorous and aren't so glitzy. Like, get into the, I don't know, money laundering, gambling, this kind of stuff. Like, Damn. explore this kind of thing. I'm a big poker player, and I'm sure I've played poker with some nefarious characters in my time and they're very sweet and kind and like uh, amiable at the poker table but I'm sure there's some of these guys that I've met that have like some family business yeah they some... have someone's daughter tied up in their basement <laughs> oh Christ are you the same person in your videos as you are in real life and if not how different are you no not uh, I would say it's like an 80% representation of myself right I, I swear a lot uh -huh. in real life in England the F word is like used as a substitutes adverb adjective noun right verb and some people will criticize that as a sign of low intelligence but my theory is that cursing is a sign of like uh confidence and intelligence where you're happy with using cursing or swearing as it's known in uk english as a way of expressing yourself and it's completely fine like william my son swears all the time in the house piece of shit. And we've allowed him that form of expression as long as he knows that he doesn't do it in the wrong circumstances. Right. So in some of my videos, I'll edit out swearing. So that's editing out my personality. If I think oh, some- come on, that's low hanging. Is it? Oh, I cut swearing out of it. There's also a monetary reason behind that, right? Because you don't get, you know, the, the sponsorships, the CPM is lower if you curse. I'm, I'm sorry to mention Koo again, but Koo always says that in his videos, yeah. I'm way more myself than I am in my own videos and I care too much about my own image on my channel. Okay. But in his videos, I'll be more relaxed and let, because right. I don't it's have- Right, you don't have any risk to take, it's not your video. I'm not filming anything, I'm just gonna show up and be myself and try and be as entertaining and funny as possible. Whereas on my channel, I'm a little bit more wary of offending people and I don't want to say the wrong thing. So maybe if I say something sarcastic when we're filming, which we do often together, Yeah. It's obviously sarcastic between us. Right. But I don't want to risk it being interpreted the, the wrong, wrong way. way. Sure. My last question is what's your biggest fear and have you ever faced it head on? I'm starting to shake now thinking about it, but I think death is my biggest fear. Like knowing that I'm going to die. Right. I know I'm going to die, but not now, not anytime soon. Huh. And if I get hit by a bus, then that's my biggest fear eradicated because I didn't know I was going to die. But if you tell me now, you're gonna die in four weeks time, you've got 28 days to live, I would be absolutely petrified. I'd be so terrified. Right. In fact, when I watch movies and I see this common scene of a family sitting around grandpa in the bed and he's like telling everybody, you do well in your medicine career, you do well in your business career. Yeah. And he's, no pressure, William. And he's so <laughs> calm and he's so like stoic and father-like. Right. That would not be me. I would be freaking the heck out. <laughs> I'd be like, Get me the medicine, get me, get me healed. I don't want to die, don't let, I'm, I would just be. Grabbing William by the collars of his shirt. Don't, don't let, let me get die, home. don't let me die. I've had anxiety attacks before <clears throat> where I thought I'm going to die. And it's like, it's, it just washes over me with this fear. And also I guess like to be a little bit cliche, 
is to die without a million subscribers because William, <laughs> oh, William. hit that subscribe button. Don't let him die without a million subscribers. William, William is sure I'm gonna get a million subscribers. He wants me to get a million subscribers. And I'm like, to let him down would be such a, a failure on my part. So anyways, yeah, those are all my questions. I hope you guys found that interesting. If you have questions that you thought I missed or wanted to ask, you can put them in the comments and maybe he'll go and answer them. Mm -hmm. You can follow me on Instagram at Prozzy underscore SR. You can follow Alan at Life in Taiwan. 2017. We have a podcast we share together that'll be linked in the description below where we talk about anything and everything. We're a lot more honest in that podcast. We let everything fly. If you want to get to know us a little bit more, that's a great place to go and do it. If this is sort of more of your thing, this type of video, then I think you'll love the podcast. So, no subtitles though. No subtitles. So yeah, if you wanted to see what questions Alan had for me, go check out his channel. That video will be out right now, like I mentioned earlier. Other than that, stay positive, keep a stick on the ice, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.